our Foundations class, which serves as our entry point into church membership for South Suburban Church. We're going to spend the course of our time together digging into this packet of information, which hopefully you have by now. This will kind of serve as our guide during the course of these videos together. We're going to look at who we are, what we as a church believe, and where we sense God leading us as His people. If you open up to the very first page, you'll see the process for becoming a member of our church. The first thing on the list is attending the welcome class taught by Pastor Bruce. If you haven't attended this and would like to, feel free to reach out to him and find out how you can get involved and when the next class is going to be. He walks through some history of the church, some staffing about the church, and how we have ended up where we are today in that class. The second step is attending this class, the Foundations class, which is not uh, optional. You have to attend this class in order to apply for membership at the church. Next, we ask you to read the Church Constitution and Bylaws, which is available on our website and linked in the packet, as well as the Covenant for Membership, which is on pages 9 and 10 of this packet that we'll be going over together at the end of the class. If you agreed to abide by all these things that you read, please sign the covenant on these last two pages and bring it with you to the meeting at the next step. This next step is to be interviewed by two overseers to share your testimony, the way God has worked in your life and drawn him to yourself, and how you can use your gifts to serve this body. After that, the overseers will follow up with any additional questions or concerns, and then you will be presented to the entire congregation for a vote of affirmation into membership at which point you will be welcomed in as a covenant member of South Suburban. I ask that over the course of this that you do not take this commitment lightly. This class is a great opportunity for you to learn specific things, maybe reach out to any of us on staff with specific questions, and spend time praying about whether or not this is the right place for you to plant yourself, to serve, to grow, and ultimately discern if God is leading you to become a part of our church family. The class and thus this packet and these videos is going to be broken up in the following ways. We'll begin with a welcome that just kind of serves as an overview of what we'll be doing together. We'll dig into what is the gospel message, how do we talk about it, and how does, it, how does that impact and influence our lives. We'll spend some time digging into why we emphasize church membership. Is it actually in the Bible? Why do we believe that we, we should become a member of a local church? We'll see what we believe. We are a part of the Evangelical Free Church of America, which is centered around 10 core doctrinal truths. We'll look at some distinctives about us as an individual church. We'll see how we as Christians are called to live. And lastly, we'll read through the membership covenant together. At the very beginning here, I thought it would be helpful to share some resources that I recommend as, as those that have kind of set the foundation for me as I think and process through why we have what we have here in our church membership class. The first that we'll be digging into together in the next video is called What is the Gospel by Greg Gilbert. He walks through a four-word definition of the gospel, which you have to tune back later to find out what it is, but it serves as a great foundation and a launching pad to dig into what is the gospel. Second, it's called Church Membership, How the World Knows Who Represents Jesus by Jonathan Lehman. This is another really helpful book that kind of talks about how we serve as ambassadors in the midst of this world that we find ourselves living in. Next is Evangelical Convictions. This was written by the EFCA. In 2008, the EFCA rewrote our statement of faith and condensed it down into 10 core truths that we all agree together. And this book serves as a foundation point. If you have further questions about any of the 10 points of our statement of faith, this book is a great resource for you. It's really cheap on Kindle. I know they're in the process of updating it right now as well. So when that does, that new edition comes out, I would highly recommend grabbing that and digging into it if you've got further questions. Next is The Trellis and the Vine, The Ministry Mind Shift That Changes Everything by Colin Marshall and Tony Payne. This book came out in 2008 and kind of made huge waves across the evangelical landscape. They compare the church to a vine, which Jesus says we are a vine, and, and a vine in order to flourish and remain healthy needs a trellis in place. And so often the trellis becomes the emphasis of the churches at the expense of the vine. The trellis is the programs, the structures, the things that we need in order to flourish. But so often those get our attention instead of the vine. And what we need to do is be, be doing whatever we can to make sure the vine, the disciples, are remaining healthy. So this is a wonderful resource digging into how do we grow as disciples. Next is Saturate by Jeff Vanderstelt. 
Jeff actually grew up in the ESCA. He's spoken at a number of conferences we've done. And he's, he's really passionate about what, what is known as a missional idea. That is, we are on mission with Jesus to share the good news, the gospel, with anyone and everyone around us. This idea of saturate is, is allowing the gospel to saturate into every area of our lives so that people can see God glorified in us and through us so that we can be a visible demonstration of the gospel with whomever we come into contact with. Next is Worship Matters by Bob Coughlin. This actually helped kind of call me into ministry as, as I was wrestling through where God was leading me in my life. And, and in this book, Bob Coughlin shares how we can, can view and shape our worship experiences, our worship services, as an opportunity for honoring and glorifying our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So th this one is, is a really helpful book about what should we be looking at when we gather together as God's people. Next is one that we as overseers have gone through. It's called Church Elders, How to Shepherd God's People Like Jesus by Jeremy Wren. Another short little book that's really easy to dig into and see what you should be looking for in leadership of a church. Next is The Gospel Comes with a House Key by Rosaria Butterfield. Rosaria was saved out of a lesbian lifestyle. She was a, a tenured professor at Syracuse, and God, through the witness and work of a, of a pastor and his wife, God saved Rosaria Butterfield. And now, because of that witness of, of hospitality, she takes that command seriously in her life as well and urges and encourages all Christians everywhere to take seriously the command to show hospitality to one another. This is a great book that tells about some practical ways that we can do that in our own lives. Next is When Helping Hurts, How to Alleviate Poverty Without Hurting the Poor and Yourself by Steve Corbett and Brian Fickert. Now, one of the most difficult things for churches to do is how do we practice mercy ministry? How do we ensure that we're not just caring for the spiritual needs of people, but we're also caring for the physical needs of people? This book is a wonderful resource that kind of helps you understand how we can care holistically for people, not just about their physical or their spiritual needs, but both. Last, this one just serves as a great resource. I wouldn't necessarily re recommend sitting down and reading this from cover to cover, but it's a great one to have on your shelf. If you ever have questions or want to learn more about specific attributes of God and theology, it is Systematic Theology by Wayne Grudem. Now, he's got a brand new edition of this coming out just in a couple weeks that, that I would highly recommend that you have. Again, I just like having some of these books on my shelf as a resource so I can dig into some of what other people have shared about these deep truths of God. So those are the list of books that I would recommend. If you want to borrow any of them or see them from me, please reach out to me and let me know. All right, if you would flip over to page one in your packet, the top should say welcome, and we'll just work our way through this. We're going to spend some time today digging into some very important issues. In fact, the first thing we'll be talking about is the single most important issue in everyone's life. A.W. Tozer, a pastor in the 20th century, wrote in his book, Knowledge of the Holy, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. So we as, we as a church, we as God's people here are passionate about bringing the gospel to bear in every area of our lives. Uh, another way of expressing this is our theology must be made manifest in our doxology. Now, theology is, is just a combination of two Greek words, theos and logos. That is God talk. So anytime we are doing theology, we are talking about God. And we all need to grow in our theology, our understanding, our awareness of who God is. But the end goal of all of our theology is doxology. That is doxos, which is glory, glory talk. How do we praise? How do we worship? How do we adore God? God, all of us are worshiping someone or something, and we as Christians are commanded to worship God above any and everything else. So there's this interplay between theology and doxology. But at the end of the day, if our theology does not lead us to doxology, then our theology is useless. James 2.19 says that even demons have good theology. In fact, demons have better theology than most of us because they're able to see and interpret rightly a lot of the spiritual realities that we so often miss. Where they're deficient is their doxology. Instead of using their, their theology to worship, to bow down and, and stand in awe of God, they use it to shake their fist at Him and do anything they can to undermine His supreme rule. So all theology has as its end goal acceptable worship of God. In Hebrews chapter 12, verses 28 and 29, the author tells us this, Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Tim Keller talks about the gospel this way. The gospel is not just the ABCs of Christianity, but the A to Z of Christianity. 
The gospel is not the minimum required doctrine necessary to enter the kingdom, but the way we make all progress in the kingdom. John Calvin similarly quipped, without the gospel, everything is useless and vain. Therefore, the gospel serves as the centering point, the hub around which everything else flows out. We also believe that the gospel compels us to emphasize the local church as the visible representation of God's kingdom on earth. We together as this body implore others as ambassadors of reconciliation, which we see in 2 Corinthians 5.20. We shine as lights in the darkness, which we see in Philippians 2.15. And we pursue unity through love, which we see in Ephesians 4 and 1 Corinthians 13. So during the course of these videos, we'll explain how we talk about the gospel, why the gospel drives us to church membership, how the gospel shapes what we believe, and finally, how we live in light of this gospel.